Welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And yes, I am in, in Tyrrell's workshop with the Espada, which is just there. And just a little explanation of what's been going on, what's gonna happen in this video. The Espada, I started it a few weeks ago uh, and I, ch I just could smell petrol. Lifted the bonnet and there was petrol dripping from the carburetors. I phoned Ian, I said, there's a bit of an issue. Not sure what it is, do you mind having a look at it? Because the, for whatever reason, the carburetors were flooding and you could see petrol in the engine compartment, undrivable, whisk it up here. And I also asked him to do a power run on the engine because much as it ran really well, the Espada, after the lumen ignition, ignition and all the nightmares we've had, had really good torque. And, but if you revved it right out to over 7,000, there was no real need. And it surprised me that it didn't have a sort of feeling of gathering horsepower as it went through the rev range. I asked him to put it on the rolling road. And that's what this video is about because we've made a discovery which ian will explain while i find him so i think the best thing now go find ian and i will explain what we're up to ian hello hello i'm back welcome Can't keep away. yes absolutely yes. yes and with the espada look i always love coming up here because look at what's in here from blower bentley's aston's yeah and oh just how many mirrors do you think we've got in here just uh, a, uh, four, I think. Four. <laughs> and Kuntash is yeah. one of a few of those as well. Three, four, four. Yeah, so four. God, I, I just, yeah, extraordinary coming up here. But, Don't often see Testarossas in here though. No, we've had a bit of a run on them. It, it's, they're like policemen or buses. You yeah. get none in and then all of a sudden they've all arrived. <laughs> yes. And Espada's blue yes. one there. Yeah. And there's another one in the corner. So there. yeah, I can't can't even win. Normally, I, this is the only I've never seen the Spada come up here. There's three, <laughs> but yeah, we ought to explain what's been going on, haven't we? Yes. With this, um, shall I lift this up mm. and expose its lovely engine? I think we. Uh, it's uh, it's it's worth mentioning. Yeah. Um, obviously, Marcello Gandini's just passed away. Yeah. We've got. Uh, I've worked it out, we've got 12 of his Italian exotics Have you styled really? here on site at the moment, which is amazing, actually. That is, isn't it? Oh, I've, I've been really, you know, the tributes that have come out have been terrific, actually. Yes. I, we, I knew I wasn't the only fan of Gandini, everyone was a fan, but just yeah. to see the yeah. impact he had and yes. uh, his designs. You know, you forget he did like BMW 5 Series, exactly. BMW, didn't he? That then Citroen BX. Citroen BX, was he used it every day, didn't he? Stratos, to me, is king. Oh. Uh, amazing uh, yeah amazing there we are and obviously a spada yes here so yeah i'm a, i'm a bit of a sucker for i think his desire just love them yes Absolutely love i them. agree and you met him actually didn't you I you did. actually went out there and talked miura yes with him. i did yeah. he's a very very he invited me to his home um olivier namesh organized it i must give him credit for that yeah but he was so gracious we took an interpreter Right. He was incredibly humble, and he, I took the Italian job, Mura, and he, yes. he actually walked around the car and showed me how we designed it. Really? Unbelievable. Yeah. Because, um, it, yeah, it was very quick design, that wasn't it? Three months or whatever. Yes. And I think even less than that, actually. Was it really? I saw an interview <clears> with <throat> Bruce Lamborghini and with Gandini and how they came up with the show's cars. And Ferruccio's uh, instruction to Gandini was the shock. It was, there was nothing to follow. The, you couldn't say it was an evolution of a Lamborghini. There wasn't a Lamborghini look. It was just, wow, yes. was every time the covers came off at the motor show. Yeah. Hence, and the spa doesn't really look like a Kuntash or a Miura or anything. It was completely different. Amazing. And that takes some talent. It does. I agree. Yeah. Um, ap apparently, the Marzal. Apparently, yeah. um, Ferruccio Lamborghini, when Nuccio Bertoni first showed it to him, he yeah. visibly, phys physically shuddered. <laughs> At the very thought, all that <laughs> glass. I created this? Yes. <laughs> it was a mad thing yeah. that I've seen. But, yeah, Espada engines. So, yes. yeah, I've just felt that it was great rebound. Everything worked well and it had great grunt, you know. They had ridiculous feeling of torque, but not yes. quite. The top end, yes. odd. Well, it's... It's quite interesting because um, I've driven and worked on a few Espadas over the last 40 years, so yeah. I have an idea of what yeah. the performance should be like. Yeah. And the performance on this car, um, top end wise, was just about where it's at. 
yes. for a standard Espada. Right. Um, and it, on, an, on a standard Espada, it's all over by 7,000 RPM. You've got yes. valve bounce at 7.2 because of the weight of the valve springs, yeah. etc. cetera. Um, um, and as you know, we, 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 we shot for the stars with building this engine. Yes. Um, and it's got all, as you say, it's got all the mid-range torque. I mean, I've never driven an Espada where you put your foot down and the front end goes yeah. up like a Ferrari yeah. Daytona. Yeah, it shouldn't have it. It's a short stroke engine, four yeah. litre, but it's proper yeah. mid-range grunt. Exactly. But higher up the rev range, I mean, we've been chasing ignition curves, we've been chasing all sorts of things. Yeah. And it got to the stage where, I mean, you, you said to me, you know, because to me the top end felt right, but yeah. it was skewed by the fact that we had ladlefuls of mid-range torque. Yeah. Um, but really the top end should be, as you say, it should be better. Yeah. Um, we had a go at the cams, didn't you? You actually had a go at advancing the cams. We, we did, because I wondered if the valve timing was slightly, um, I mean, it's, it was standard. We set it up as yeah. standard, but we tried just giving it a little bit more valve overlap. Um, it didn't increase the top end power and we lost no. some of the torque, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have a look at some graphs in a minute, but that's quite easy, because these are the inlet cams, aren't they? These they are, the so top. they're super easy to get at. Yeah. yeah, and you've got a vernier gauge on each cam, so you, when you adjust it, isn't it, it's just brilliant. You can adjust it infinitely, basically. Yeah, yeah. I just brought this little collection. We'll come to that in a minute. That is a road test of an Espada S2, uh -huh. 19, April 1972. I just brought this one along. This is 1987 motor, because inside is this very car living with a Lamborghini. And uh, this, yeah, John and Jenny Taylor, who actually did the work on this car, redid it. So some, yeah, quite nice shots of it, really. Mm. And they, yeah, and a, that was the registration it had. He rebuilt the engine, did everything in it. But yeah, we just look at these. There's a, these are the sort of graphs. They, they're not true sort of power runs, but they give an indication of what we got. And this is as standard, wasn't it? Uh, the, that's the... Uh, yeah, this one's as that's, standard. That's right, yeah. unaltered valve timing. Yeah, yeah. and it's this torque. I almost ignore the numbers on it because this was actually done in third gear. It was the yeah. shape of the torque and the power at the wheels is what we're after. Yeah. And according to all the literature, this car from Lamborghini is 350 horsepower engine, 325 for a Series 1, isn't it? Yeah, at the flywheel. At the flywheel. And yeah. we are 203 at the wheels, which translates to about 250. Yeah. Which you think it was a bit of a shock, wasn't it? How low in a way it was. It was, particularly yeah. how the car felt on the road. Yeah, it's so odd, isn't it? Yeah. And then you did the valve, t you, you advanced the inlet cam, and then you can see how the torque then drops away. We're down to yes. 380 rather than 450 sort of number, then it gains a little bit then. So actually, it didn't gain any horsepower, it just lost torque in the mid range. So Precisely. that's why you've gone back to standard, yep. isn't it? But that begs the question. Why isn't it 350 horsepower? Exactly. And I have to say I was a bit concerned. Yes. I was officially worried because I thought, what, yeah. what have we done? You know, where, where yeah. has it gone? Well, the reason I'm here, because there was a bit of a light bulb moment. I wonder what about the exhaust, isn't it? Because the gentleman who did rebuild it in 1987 had a stainless steel exhaust put on it. Yes. And, uh, yeah, you just don't know, do you? Because it's not the standard exhaust. And I thought, well, is it adding back pressure? That would explain the lack of top end. And then, yeah, you came up with a cunning plan, didn't you? I did, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and we've, we've actually purchased a couple, fortunately, exhaust back pressure gauges because of the age of the catalyst, yeah. which we're now in, of course. Yeah. Um, once catalysts, if you put leaded fuel, even a, even a pint of leaded fuel in a car that with a catalyst on it, wrecks the catalyst because yes. it starts a chemical reaction. Um, so you can buy catalyst back pressure gauges for things like have a look. Yeah. Uh, diesel particulate filters and things like that. So I just purchased a couple of these. Right. We've hooked them up to the exhaust. Yeah. Um, and there they are in all their glory. Yeah. And they we tell you. They tell you. Whether, whether the, the exhaust is restrictive Correct. for the amount of pass, yeah. And it is. Uh, and it is, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you were very excited when you phoned me last night and sent me a little video. We won't give the game away, but these tell a story, don't they? They do, yeah. yes. Yeah. I think before we, I, what we're going to do is go out in the car and obviously, you know, have another go at this. Should we just put it on a ramp and have a look underneath and just have a look at the exhaust as it is? Yeah. Is, that, is that all right? Great. Yeah, let's yes. do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, engine manifolds coming yeah. off the engine here. This, I mean, is this the same size as Mura, all this? Up here, uh, pretty well. Yeah, th they're yeah. surprisingly small. They actually. are, aren't they? Yeah, you got but two, th three into one collectors either side. Yeah, and then they go into one here. Go on here. Well, if you think about it, then uh, three cylinders are on that. Correct. Aren't they? Yeah. Two liters, so it's one liter engine. Yes. On, if you see to me, so there's four liter engine. Yeah. Yeah. Weird, isn't it? Because it's in four pipes. But this is where you've tapped in then. This is it's your. It's actually the only place. Yeah. Because we can't do it here because we only get three cylinders oh, worth. I see what you mean. Uh, we can't do it any further because we lose the potential back pressure of that that, that yeah. could be causing. So uh, that's. And Les has had to. We've had to just be a bit nifty, really. Right. To get. Yeah, to get the right positions. And these, these do a little bit of science in, and they've got some, I don't know, some glass fibre around them. It goes straight through, won't it's it? Perf per it's a perforated tube, probably yeah. the same diameter as this, with some basalt round it. Right. Yeah. But we don't think that's, if there's going to be restriction here, it won't be there. It will be these guys. Exactly. Say. Exactly. These right. are the rear boxes. And you th these look quite small, actually, when you think about it. Yes, I think they're about half the size of the standard mild steel How ones. Weird. Yeah, and you, they're yeah they're quite convoluted. There is a quite a bend. You know, it's a ninety degree there and a ninety exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that to me that indicates a restriction. The heat where, it's, where the temperature's yeah. been up inside. Right. So I think there's a baffle there causing issues. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, we don't want to give away. I want to see those gauges. What they do. So I think it's time to take it for a drive and uh, yeah, you can show us what you discovered yesterday. Okay. Yeah, brilliant. Well, here we go. All good. Yeah. yeah. Always sounds sweet, this car, every time you start it up really, doesn't it? It's, yeah. Yes, it does. So it should really. Yes. <laughs> We say passing a Daytona, which sounds anything but sweet. Oh, really? At low revs. Oh. It was just carburetor or sat still for a while. Um, no, it's, J Daytonas generally sound like a bag of spanners when they're idling. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. If the tappets are set correctly, but what people do is set them too narrow, the tappets, to right. try and try them it down. Quiet. <laughs> which, as you can imagine, doesn't do a lot of good. No. Sorry about the rain. Yeah, well, it's everywhere, isn't it? Another, another inch of rain we had yesterday and oh. this morning when I left home on the farm. So your gauges, they're not moving yet, then? Uh, no, they're, they're just they're chattering not. away. Is that is that a chatter we can hear? Yeah. yeah, we should point out that we're having to drive with the window open for fairly obvious reasons, but we should be all right. Uh, yeah, we, we ought to get a bit more heat into the engine as well. I sense the moment of truth coming up. I think so, yeah. I'm going to use seconds, so I think if we're 7,000 RPM in third, we're going quite quickly, aren't we? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Probably better not to see that subject. No, no. <laughs> we certainly won't be doing it in fourth. Right, I have selected seconds. I am at 2,000 RPM. And wondering just looking underneath the car is it possible to take those back boxes off and just see what it's like with them off absolutely <laughs> it's like we can't you know can't poke something down the back of the exhaust to spray it up but we can just remove them can't yes. we and it might be a bit loud it might be the loudest <laughs> espada the world has ever seen but it's it's important work this it's, 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 it's a scientific project yeah. 
We do need to find those missing horsepower. Yes. Yeah, good. Well, let's have a go at that. There we go. Easy as that. Is that going to... Oh. Right. Now, of course, the lift is in the way. No, no, it's coming off. It's coming off. This is warm. Yeah, good. That's excellent. That is a bit of a result, isn't it? That is. We like them when they come off like that. Yes. <laughs> so the plan now is just to take the one off, isn't it? And then we don't yes. have to. We can spot the difference. Exactly. Uh, on the gauges, and we're now dashing because there's an enormous amount of rain about to rock up. And we don't want to be doing it in the rain if we can help it. This is an original exhaust you had tucked away, wasn't it? This is it? out of a Urama. This yeah. is an Ansel Mild steel. But you, I mean, that's got twice the... Uh... Well, it was huge, completely different. Yeah. Yeah. And look at the size of the rear... Yeah, yeah. You, you've, got the, you've got the uh, perforated bit inside there. I don't know if we see that. Anyway, down there, yeah. perforated. But that... That's got those two pipes coming out of it, and that's just got the one pipe exactly. that then does that. Exactly. So they're just show on this. Exactly. No, I think that looks so much more restricted than that. It's looking a bit guilty, isn't yes. it? Yes, I think we need to go out again and make a lot of noise. <laughs> first prod. just coming up now, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, I might sorry, just put it into second now. Here we go. Yeah, it's improved, but there is still back pressure, there isn't is, there? There is. Which would explain why it's so quiet. Yeah. Because there's obviously still a lot of silencing in back from that front cylinder on the exhaust. But massively. Surprised at the difference in bore between your armor and an Espada yes. with the same engine. Yeah. Huge difference in the exhaust system. Yeah. And I would have thought with the Espada they were going for refinement above all else. Yes. And you still get the 350 horsepower coming. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's, yeah. let's dash back to the workshop before it chucks it down with rain. But yeah, good. It's interesting to see what it does it if it feels any more responsive. It feels well, a bit more I'm strong at the top of engine. I don't think you're gonna tell that much because it's not it's not as though it's gone down to one. That's it at all. Yeah, I'm doing this in four, this is very bad. This there'll be a Yeah, it's got me put it into second again. It's 
so it's quicker than any Espada I've ever been in. No. <laughs> yeah, so we're we're you know adding cherries and icing onto this it's a very delicious cake. But it is not a car that you say is always a bit slow. Yeah. And actually, against my Jaguar Coupe. I just has, I like, this has a racier feel about it. Just the engine, just the railings, just that induction bar. But there's more to give. Yeah. We might as well get to its full potential. Well. That was interesting, wasn't it? <laughs> but uh, uh, something missing at the back. Just looks wrong. I'm very, very surprised at that. I would have expected it to be louder. Unreal. Yeah. And uh, I'd have expected. I mean, it's still got quite a bit of back pressure on there. Yes. Um, yeah. I know. It's a whole new system, isn't it? I it thought. Is. Yes. I thought we'd be using that, and we'd just be doing something with I the agree. tail boxes. But yes. I couldn't see where I, when I was driving what the peak was. And we'll look back at the footage, but there was. Still significant, wasn't it? It back was. Pressure. Yes, it was. It was uh, about three psi, four psi down on the on the other side. Oh, so it's halved almost. Yes. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But peak. it's still more than we'd want, really. Yeah. Well, looking at that rear box with that your armour and my car, there's a huge difference in the bores. Yes. As I say, that Espada has got a completely different system as well. Nothing in the middle, all coming to the rear box. And also the rear box are linked, which I think is a good idea on yes. that Espada. Yeah. And then there's that Espada. And I can't remember that one. Uh, that one's similar to this, actually. Yeah. See, uh, to, to go, I think, I don't think there's ever been a super efficient Espada exhaust right. system yeah. from day one. Well, yeah. looking at what you've, I've seen today, I basically want a system off of your armor put on this. That's, yes. that's where I see it. That okay. was the performance Espada Coupe. Yes. It's dramatically bit uh, different on those boxes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the engine, which is the good thing, isn't it? It's healthy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it feels quick, so, you know, but yeah, it could be even better. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're, 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 we're. Yeah. It's a good project, I, though. I'm not sure I had a plan B if that back pressure no. was fine. No. Uh, so I'm very gratified to. Uh, yeah. To, to find that. that. Well, yeah. Well, thank you, Ian. Thank you for getting those gauges in and discovering what we have. That's very uh, useful. Pleasure. To be continued. There we go. Well, so. there you are. There's the video on this Espada and this mystery on why that top end horsepower is missing. It looks like we're on a journey to get a big bore exhaust. I want to add more sound, more noise and more go to this Espada. So we'll be back up here, I hope, with a lovely exhaust on it and we'll have no back pressure and it will fly. Hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming on very soon.